Welcome to Roughing It With Ruth, the channel where everything is a bit rough around the edges. I am a hiker and I also live in South Africa. And while South Africa has some really spectacular outdoor areas to go and explore, it's unfortunately also true that there is a lot of crime in South Africa. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the steps that I usually take to try and avoid being a victim of crime on the trail. However, I do just want to start out by saying that if you do become a victim of crime, it's often not through any fault of your own. You can do all of the things that I mentioned in this video and more, and you can still have to face a criminal or have your belongings stolen or be assaulted. So please don't feel like these tips are being aimed at people in order to make them feel bad that they aren't doing enough to keep themselves safe out there because sometimes there really is just nothing that you can do. The most important thing that I do is I try to keep up to date with the area that I'm going to be hiking in. So I look at online forums, I look at social media, Facebook groups, and I see if there are any incidents that have been reported. Local hiking clubs and hiking groups are also a great resource for this kind of thing. Sometimes areas will actually be closed if there are criminal activities that are getting out of hand in that area. Then another thing that is really important to talk about is the trip to the trailhead. In your car, make sure that the doors are always locked while you are traveling and make sure that any valuables that you might have are concealed. You don't want to be displaying your phone openly because smash and grab is a reality here, unfortunately. And if you leave your car at the trailhead, again, make sure that all of your valuables are concealed and not easily visible from the outside of the car. Then on the trail, you definitely want to carry as few valuables with you as possible. Don't carry large amounts of cash. Don't carry expensive jewelry. Try not to carry expensive electronics if you can help it, because all of those kinds of things are going to incentivize criminals to want to steal from you. Another really important point is to be aware of your surroundings. So pay attention to what is happening to you on the trail. Do not hike with earbuds in, listening to music. Make sure that you can hear what's going on in the surroundings and just be aware. Look around, don't get deep into a conversation with your buddies and forget to notice what's happening. Something that I definitely advocate for is to hike in a group. This is not only a good idea from a emergency injury perspective, but also in terms of deterring criminals. Sometimes large groups do still fall prey to criminals, but in my experience, having a larger group is a bit safer than being on your own. Make sure that when you get to the trailhead, you immediately save any emergency numbers that you might need on your phone. So if there is an emergency number displayed at the trailhead, take a picture or save it onto your phone so that you have it instantly available if you do need it. Something that I have found really useful is to set up panic buttons both on my phone and on my watch. If you don't have a watch that has that kind of feature, then have a look at your phone. Most smartphones will have some way of setting up a panic button on the phone. Make sure that it's a panic button that is easily available to be activated and you don't have to first unlock your phone in order to activate the panic button. Because in an emergency, just being able to let someone know that that something is wrong is very beneficial. And then in that same vein, look into having some kind of live location sharing app on your phone. My Garmin actually has that functionality if you set it up correctly, where you can share your live location with somebody that you trust so that they can actually watch you doing your hike or backpacking trip and kind of keep track of you and see if something goes wrong. If you are going to be hiking or backpacking at night, so let's say you are doing an overnight trip, then I would consider using a red light instead of the normal white light from headlamps and torches because the red light preserves your own night vision better and it also is less visible from a distance. So it will help to conceal your campsite a little bit better and it will also preserve your own night vision if you do need to suddenly turn out your lights and do something in the dark. And then speaking of camping, try to avoid heavily trafficked areas. This is particularly true in like wilderness areas like the Drakensberg. Try not to camp right where a very obvious trail is. Try to find a slightly more secluded hidden campsite. Some people even like 
hiking right up until it starts getting dark and then making camp so that they are reasonably certain that they haven't been watched from afar. Although I am making this video in order to help people avoid crime, I really, really hope that nobody watching this experiences any crime on the trail ever, but it is probably smart to take some precautions, particularly in South Africa. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then you can click on my channel name to see videos that I've made in the past, or you can subscribe to my channel to see videos that I'm going to make in the future.